So at Sandstorm, we mainly use Alexa and Alexa Mini on our Techno Dolly, but it also works very well with Sony Venice. Well, you name it really, it's pretty much gonna work on there. One of the essential components is the camera must be able to sync using shutter pulse, genlock or time code. The other big one is that it ideally should fit on the S head. And by ideally, that's because we have a very, very small roll head, as you can see. If you need to fit a larger camera on, we've got a flat plate, which just gives you a lot more space for the camera. However, you're gonna lose all the roll capabilities. So we have to make that call when we're 100% on the shot requirements. The length of the camera package is also a consideration, especially if you're planning on tilting down a lot as the top of the head and the camera feed can easily get caught on long camera setups, especially with periscopes or big zoom lenses. The Techno Dolly can use its own focus motors, though we opt for Preston setups where possible. It will work with C-Motion kits as well but we recommend using Preston because it's tried and tested we even bring our own one in the van with us each of these focus options is fully compatible with the technology software so we can either keyframe moves or we can record manual focus changes and then when we're in playback it will repeat them frame accurately each time it can even be adjusted live so for example we could have had a keyframe move and you want to add stuff later we simply give you control at any point and you could either add keyframes or manually adjust the entire move the Techno Dolly arrives rigged to provide a camera feed. So ideally run your Teradex from our VDA at the desk end rather than putting it on the rig. We've got 12 volt and 24 volt power at the head, but it's always in Panavision polarity. If you're gonna supply a brick battery, you're gonna need at least 10 meters of cable to reach the camera base, which as you can see, is quite a long way away. A key consideration when working with the Techno Dolly is the lens options. In an ideal situation, there never is one, each lens should be balanced ahead of the shoot, and one of the reasons being it takes quite a long time, as with most cranes, to balance up. This is especially important if you're using things like Primos or vintage anamorphic lenses where the weights vary incredibly. We also recommend bringing an extended sliding plate if you're planning to shoot with a periscope or a probe lens. Often, if we're using a periscope, we'll have the rig running down like that with the periscope down to the ground. And as you can see, it's gonna need an awful lot of balancing. It's important to connect and check camera sync is working before we start, otherwise plate shots don't always line up. It's also very important to keep a nice open communication between the camera department and the Techno Dolly operator, mainly to ensure that things like the focus system are working and you're getting the right control level that you expect. And in turn, when we're doing repeat passes, you don't accidentally pull focus for us. So why would you use a Techno Dolly? Why not use motion control or a regular crane? Well, for me, it's speed of use, quiet operation, intuitive controls, repeatable moves, and versatility. You can shoot an entire film on a Techno Dolly or just a few visual effect shots. The only real issue with the Techno Dolly is not enough people know how to use it. The Techno Dolly is a totally unique piece of filmmaking equipment. You can do fully manual moves or fully automatic moves. You can do anything in between. So first, let's do a fully programmed move, an ideal solution for precisely timed moves. We'll set a few keyframes for camera position and focus, set a playback time, and we're ready to go. And it really can be as quick as that. You can have as many keyframes as you like, delete or adjust keyframes. You can add more at any time. You can even take control of the head and move it by hand into any of those positions. We use this a lot, primarily in advertising, especially where products and tabletop are involved. You can also do a fully manual move, and this is normally used by main unit to capture an actor's performance for the master take. Every part of the crane, including the focus, are memorized by the Techno Dolly, and they can be repeated, frame accurately, instantly, all with the look and feel of how a crane is moved by a crew rather than a robot. So what the hell? There are a few limitations to keep in mind, the main one being that a crew can often move the crane faster than the motors can. So once a take is created, we simply check the limits to see if it's gonna work or not. Once you have a move, whether it's keyframed or manual, you can offset the move, play it back at different speeds, scale it to different sizes, and even export it to help post-production. You can also unlock different axes and mix manual moves with playback. For example, we might be starting with the camera right up against a sidewall and finishing against another, but we want to adjust the boom tilt manually to follow the action. In this instance, I can unlock just the boom tilt to be manual and everything else stays motorized. One of the best tools for DOPs is the head can be completely disengaged from the motors, so you can have full handheld control to either find your perfect keyframes or even record an entire genuine handheld move that can be repeated. The advantage of the Techno Dolly is that the position can be saved so you can revisit each angle perfectly at any time. This has got to stop! Stop what? 
You lying to yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not having this. And finally, like other small cranes, this rig is quick to move for all your standard coverage. We often get this on shoots where the techno dolly is up first for a VFX shot and then the camera stays on our rig all day to get other non-repeat shots. There really is nothing else out there that's as versatile and powerful as the techno dolly. Once we've arrived in our custom built box van, the techno dolly takes around 60 minutes to offload and set up without track. It takes around 90 minutes to two hours depending on the terrain to set up on track. Though normally the biggest delay for the track is actually getting a definitive position of where we're actually going to lay it. The crane is not huge, so we have to consider track position very carefully. We need a single phase 63 amp feed for full operation. We can get less power to set up and test moves, but in reality the Techno Dolly is much more likely to stall and it won't be capable of going as fast. The track is laid in 10 foot sections with a minimum of two tracks. We also bring a lot of chocks and wedges with us to help level the track beyond where the feet can take us. But if the ground is really unlevel, we need a solid base being erected ahead of our arrival. Ideally with a space of at least 10 foot in depth so that when we're swinging the crane, we don't fall off the side. The fastest and smoothest movement is on the track, but it takes the longest to set up. So for one hero shot, that's perfect. If you want to do multiple setups within the day, I would keep it on the wheels. A lot of Techno Dolly will come with the umbilical cord, but I'm personally not into using it because it's just too heavy, it takes too long to set up, and I value my spine, so we ditch ours. Before powering up the Techno Dolly, we do all the usual crane setup, so ideally with a camera on board too. We balance using long and short weighting, often using K-clumps for that extra little bit of precision. So once up and running and the software's being set up, you're welcome to get involved on the crane or the boom. However, you're gonna find the pickle a little different to other systems, and I'd recommend wherever possible that you're also near one of these screens when you're using it. The reason is pretty simple. The first one being because the T and W don't actually do anything when you're in a manual move. When you're in a manual move and you want to boom out, you've got to use this button up here, and to boom back in, you simply pull it back. If we're on track, you can use left and right to go up and down the track, and you can also go at certain angles if you want to track and boom at the same time. Then you go to the next complicated bit, which is if you've got a keyframe move and you need to get to the first position. That's called a go-to, and you do that with a T. You'll see it flashing, basically, if we set it off now, it flashes like this, I gently hold it down and you'll start to see the rig move and it will find its way to the first position. Once this starts to slow flash, you now know you're ready to go and once I release, we're now in a move and you'll see on that little screen over there, a timeline appears. T will track us forward through the move and W will track us back. One of the other cool things, if you've got a keyframe move and you're moving through it, you can also use the fluid here to adjust it. So if we wanted to start the move really subtly, I can run it down, hold T and just slowly build it up and you'll start to see it increase as it goes. We can rocker it back in the same way and slow it down as we go. That's really useful when you're doing manual moves and you're not sure, for example, how someone's going to track through a scene. One of the cool things about this feature as well is that that isn't a motion control move, so we could actually be manually recording that. For example, I don't know if the talent's going to walk across from the table, we can simply just track the move with them as we see fit. And once the director's actually happy with the move, we can simply press play and it will do it frame accurately every time. So once we've got a keyframe move that we're happy with and we want to use again, we can use the dead man, which is this. You have to hold this at a half click and you'll see it flashing and essentially this is a safety feature so if, I don't know, the crane's about to bump into someone, simply take your finger off, the move's going to stop. One of the important things to know if you're, for example, moving through a move back to the beginning is to try and ensure that it gets to zeros. It's one of the reasons I was saying about how it's so important to be able to see this screen here because if you don't get onto zeros, then when we go and press the dead man, nothing will happen. So we'll be sitting there trying to trigger and nothing will happen. The AD is going to go mental and it's normally because we're just a frame off. So it's always just really important if you're going to do it, just to rocker it through until it gets to that frame and you know 100% on that timeline it's there. So if we do this, I'm assuming there's a guy in front of the camera with this. It's got a little start button on the end or I could start it there or the guys can start it over at the desk at the back. Press the button, you'll see this pulsing. And then as soon as we press play, the rig's now starting to move and uh, it, once it comes to the end, it'll flash as well. It's that simple. 
The Techno Dolly is an amazing tool for VFX. It's basically silent, it's fully repeatable, it memorizes every axis you move manually, and it can both import and export animated camera movements in FBX and CGI. The Techno Dolly is completely unique. It's the best of all worlds, a crane and a motion control in one. The most common reason people opt for Techno Dolly over traditional motion controls are repeat passes or CGI moves without the noise of a traditional motion control, or shots they want to move like a crane rather than a robot. So what the hell? A lot of DOPs like the rig because it's small and portable. You can find shots very quickly in comparison to a traditional motion control. The Techno Dolly can trigger Q-Tate using our GPI link, so different plates can be overlaid and tested with ease in real time on set. Q-Tate can also trigger the Techno Dolly moves for time-specific synchronization, which is great for dialogue scenes between either a CGI character or two of the same person exchanging dialogue. This has got to stop! Stop what? You lying to yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not having this. You can export a camera move from Maya and import it into the Techno Dolly. This is ideal if you created complex previs and you've taken a lot of time to perfect your camera moves. The move might take some testing on the Techno Dolly, so unless you're experienced with the physical limitations of the crane, it's best to send us the move ahead so we can test it. It's also easy to export your keyframed or recorded manual moves for CGI to use later. This is an integral part of the software and it only takes a few seconds. The exports are in the industry standard FBX format. The same exported camera moves can also work between different Techno Dollies and you can even save and export a move from a Super Techno 50 Plus for example and run it straight into the Techno Dolly with no conversion. The Techno Dolly can also export its position and focus data in real time for Motion Builder or Unreal Engine via an Ethernet connection. Perfect if you plan to work within a volume or you need on-set visualization without a tracking system. I found a lot of directors are slightly unrealistic about just how quickly it can repeat moves, and by that I mean a crew can often move the crane faster than the motors can. But for that one sacrifice in speed, I feel like it makes up for it in every other way possible. One of the Techno Dolly's strengths is the connection to Q-Take. The Techno Dolly uses GPI and GPO connections, so it can send a pulse to Q-Take for plate synchronization on playback. Q-Take can also use this connection to trigger the Techno Dolly's moves, which is ideal if we're working with audio or interaction between characters filmed on different plates. This has got to stop! What was this lie you keep telling us? No, I'm not having this. She lied and then she left. <laughs> You're pathetic. The Techno Dolly can also be triggered by incoming time code. To keep this simple, because I don't think I've been on a single shoot where it's not been needed, we keep a GPI commander on our desk at all times and USB cables to connect to the video assist. One of the other things we've found is that sometimes the synchronization can just slip out by a frame or two in Q-Take. Don't be too concerned, it's a bit of a Q-Take thing and each system is different. We can normally offset our move triggers as well to work for you. So to keep it from being a major problem on set, it's very important to us the video assist and the Techno Dolly operator are working very close to each other because it reduces any confusion. The Techno Dolly works perfectly with Q-Take. It combines two of the most powerful tools on set to make truly impressive results. One of the best things for me is you can overlay stuff in real time with completely ridiculously complicated moves and the director can see exactly how it's gonna look without any confusions about what might happen in post. You didn't trust her, then she left. That's not what happened.